Okay. That's not quite how it goes. <laughs> turn up the volume. No, wait. Turn down the feedback. And it's done. We are live with Rigat Office, Matt. Oh, man. I'm still getting our own name wrong. Let's just roll the film. Hello, everyone. That's, yeah, hello, everyone. Yeah. Um, you know, when uh, you guys uh, move out of summertime and, and we yep. move into daylight savings, I'm probably going to be a little more alert. Um, these five yeah, I wouldn't make promises are, uh... that you can't keep. I, I really wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. So you don't believe that I'll get the name of our show right by the time it's daylight savings here in New Zealand? <laughs> <laughs> I did it once, maybe twice. Yeah. I oh, think yeah. what we need to do actually is you just need to record it correctly and then put it on either the beginning or the end of the rolling, right? Yeah. So that you don't have to say it anymore. And then just, you just just automate that, the process. That Carol, just automate sort the of process. Match, do the face matching thing and sort of have mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Well, th- thanks anyway. uh, everyone for, uh, <laughs> for tuning in. Uh, yep. This is uh, the 365 Message Center and uh, we do have a few, few good things to talk about. Um, let's uh, get stuck into it already. Um, That's good. Well, yeah. You know, some days like this, uh, you know, you look back on the message center and think, oh, what do I look at again? Do you do you use the the habit of dismissing things? Or you just leave them all there. I leave them all there. Yeah. I, you yeah, know, yeah. we we've talked about this. I don't know, uh-huh. probably twenty shows ago, um, uh-huh. maybe even more uh, about you know, how you manage your message center. And uh, I do not dismiss them. So I keep them all and I pay more attention to the dates. Mm. Um, So I personally am okay with however people want to manage it for themselves. uh, And just as long as it makes sense to them, Uh, you can dismiss them and go, you know, move back. The the thing that the reason why I don't dismiss them is the dismissed messages view. Like when you switch to it, just takes a moment to load and it just mm-hmm. it's not fast so i i just leave them all there yeah and we still don't really have a search feature within the web so you have to rely on the control you have to find in the browser i guess mm-hmm. <laughs> right all right well um we open up with live events and for, for those of you who have sort of kept up to to speed with with what that is um cool have you tried it out? I guess would be my question. Um, have you tried it out, Dan? I have not. I've not had the opportunity. I went on a bit of a few days of vacation um, since the kind of announcement and all that. So I, I just haven't had time. Yeah, I, I noticed the bits um, arriving well before the announcement. And then, of course, mm-hmm. the, the message center uh, message has come in. Um, right. But, you know, I've, I've kind of had parts of it. Um, before that message arrived when yeah. i first noticed it i was creating a, a event uh, i was actually booking a meeting within teams and i mm. noticed that the the meeting um thing had a choice to be able to drop down and choose a live meeting and then preview it said mm. in, in the brackets and i thought oh, well that's cool yeah um, live live events uh, just to, to sort of sum it up um it's uh, we have had Skype for Business broadcast for a little while, and both that and this, the purpose is to be able to reach a larger audience. We mm-hmm. are limited to is it two fifty within a Skype for Business meeting, um, <laughs> and that that's really laughable because yeah, to get to about one hundred and twenty or so, it just it becomes weird, and you can't yeah, yeah. share, you can't yeah, it's not. That's right, and people get dropped off and all sorts of things. Um, so you know you're looking at an audience of about ten thousand. Um, the uh, other great thing about it is that um, with live events uh, you can share your screen. <laughs> so right. with uh, um, oh look look I know I'm talking technical. Let's talk let's talk purpose for example for for starters. The purpose of it is to engage employees. The purpose of it is to be able to talk to um, and present to lots of people um, to be able to bring a group together to get that content across and um we have had some capabilities with with uh, skype for business um 
but we have even more so with uh, this new right. wave. And it's leveraging um, three services, leveraging um, Teams, leveraging Microsoft Stream, and leveraging Yammer. And the goal is, and you know, this is where um, you see kind of a, a clear path for, for this kind of partnership of, of services, is to um, you know, increase employee engagement. The town hall yes. kind of meetings, the um, being able to get a message across to your division and have That's a right. discussion about it. And the, the goal too is not just to have that one-off thing and have a recording and, and, and we're done, but having somewhere where you can continue or even begin that discussion before the event, have it during <coughs> and after and have all that lovely mm -hmm. um, uh, reaction and response. And the artifacts, yeah. The right. artifacts, exactly. Yeah. So that's that's live events, and if we're going back to our message, um, so that's that's your announcement. You'll be looking for that in the portal. I've, I've just, as I mentioned, um, I have had it for um, some time. It's it arrived in Teams, um, mm -hmm. and I've been looking for uh, the rest of the pieces to catch up. So this this one, um, I think, when it came in, it, it let me know that we've got this example here of uh, us yes if we did a a live show using the tools um then it might look something like this um where mm -hmm. we go into microsoft stream and we create a uh, live event and preview mm -hmm. um when we set all that up we um give it a title give it a thumbnail etc choose the date and time so these are all familiar <coughs> exercises for you and i when we're setting mm -hmm. up these live events in in um, youtube that's it's right. a similar kind of pattern. Um, now, when you do get to that point where you've saved those details in Stream, if you're you're creating it from there, and I probably should have started from Teams because it's the easier scenario. But from Stream, when you do create it, the only option you have is to um, use an external encoder. Uh, now, this mm. is what we use on our show. We use mm -hmm. open broadcast software. Um, which mm -hmm. we can capture screens, video cameras, audio, all that sort of stuff, bring it all together, push it out to the platform that we're streaming on, which is YouTube. And so right. you can do this now from Stream, Microsoft Stream, um, to within your organization. What you can't do yet is to people outside of your organization using Microsoft Stream. And this is something that we've uh, people have been asking about with... Uh, with stream and the ability to share videos, I guess they're still working right. out licensing things. Right. Um, now, Teams. Teams is the simpler experience. Um, I won't try and spin that up now because we are using Teams. Uh, <laughs> really difficult. Well, yes. maybe. Let, let's, I mean. Uh, Daryl, okay. don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, there you go. There you uh, go. Yeah, do it's, it. it's loading. That's loading. So, um, <clears> do it in the browser. Me, let do it in the browser, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so, we'll, we'll, we'll um, just step through it. But, Teams is a simpler experience because what you do is you just start up um, or you schedule that meeting. You say it's a live event. You plug all those regular details in that I've been talking about. Let me just mm -hmm. push this over to the other side. Um, and then um, then you just join the meeting. Now, the I idea with Teams is that your, your meeting that you're joining to begin with is your production crew. It is the, the person who might be pushing the buttons. It is your presenters. It is mm -hmm. people who may be in there to help manage the audience by um, answering questions and passing them right. on to the, to the presenters. It's um, people so other those, than in the audience. Yeah, 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 yeah that's right. Um, and we're in the right one. Go to marketing. Yes, that'll do it. Yeah, there's one of my demo tenants. Um, so going to meetings, blow this up a bit. So we schedule Jesus a meeting. Fast. No, totally. That's probably because we're running a show at the moment. <laughs> oh yeah, that's probably yeah. Um, new meeting or new live event preview. See, and that's great, but you got to know to drop that box there, that the little carrot down. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's right. there's no other indication when you come to that page that you need to drop that box or drop that carrot down to select it. Yeah, maybe. Would you like something along the top that allows you to choose? Maybe a, a little pointer there to say, "Hey, um, it's uh, it's on, it's coming." Um, yes. So this is where you would normally just add your your people, um, 
drop in your <clears throat> drop in your uh, description. You'd mm-hmm. have a sch- scheduling assistant there as well. Um, and then going further with live events, this is where you get a few more choices. Um, do you want to just <clears throat> excuse me share the the event with just specific people and groups? And mm. uh, you know the interesting thing with that. Look, if we make that choice. I just kind of wonder how how different is that to just running a regular team a regular meeting, providing some meeting yeah yeah probably not a lot different um, you know only specified people in groups can watch this live event so yeah that's okay you might have just a division or just a um, you know a, a group that that you want to to get that across to so that right. that works uh, going back to org live we don't have public yet right so. Which is, um, it's interesting that there's a placeholder there for something that, that, I don't, have they promised that's coming? You know, I can kind of wonder that, about that, because I did attend a public, I think it was a Teams meeting, yeah, Teams live event, it was run by a user group in Birmingham, um, and uh, our mate Graham from Pexit was, was one of the, the guests, so mm. m- maybe okay. it just depends on... Oh yeah, some of the options are disabled by your IT administrator. So uh, there's something I haven't played with yet: is jumping in and seeing if I can liven up public. But it's that part is no different to, well, it's it's very similar to just sharing a link to a, a teamed meeting, right? Um, and inviting guests in. Um, you've got a few other choices here, and of course you're going to need video on demand because that'll allow you to to join late and then catch up from where, you know basically at the, the delayed delayed coverage but this Q&A option is interesting um, that it does give you a place for the audience to ask questions so it's it's not chat it is more structured rather than it just streaming past and the poor old presenter having to go let me check the messages um, so you've got your Q&A so that's quick start. Yeah, I won't I won't spend too much more time on this, but quick start is really useful in that you've got a, a very basic stage. You can present content from your desktop, or you can present um, web cameras. And so, if any of your production crew, any of your presenters are sharing their desktop, you can say, "I want that," and I want their camera. And then, you, while you've pushed that to live, you can start organising the next presenter. You can. Um, you know, start to frame up what you want on that screen and then get ready to push live. And so that reduces the, right, I'm going to be sharing my desktop now, talkity, talkity, talk, while I'm waiting for it to come up. Yeah. Right. Um, Which is always an awkward time. And, you know, you, I've seen the, I don't know if you've seen the, the you know, the, the post on Facebook and Twitter going around of the things that are said during meetings. You know, it's, hey, hello, everyone, can you, who's on, you know, and... Um, can you see my screen? And yeah. um, can you please mute? Can you? Who's yeah. in the bathroom? <laughs> please yeah. mute. You know. <laughs> Some of them are quite creative. They actually go and and get sort of the whole jitter thing going on, and people are sort of yeah. jumping from different positions in the room to the actual the yeah. actual meeting room. Um, and lastly, this option again for external encoder, you can do that within Teams. So Teams mm. will just become the way of. Um, Rather than it being the way of bringing the people together for the production, um, mm-hmm. you're using it as the the platform for pushing the meeting out to people. People join using Teams, and they use the discussion and Q and A from there. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, lo- lots of different options. Uh, look, what the one that I'm looking for as well too is I want to see what this um, uh, the Yammer page is like. Being able to oh, right. start the yep. event from there and Yammer becomes the landing page, but it also becomes the discussion forum. So when people want to come in and ask their questions early, have their chats during, and then continue well, that it, conversation after. Yeah, I agree with you because you know that's something we even do on this show. Is if people have questions, you know, during the show, obviously, but also if they have questions before, and then there's the follow up. You know, mm-hmm. we do have follow up sometimes, and and so I know when you're talking about. Uh, like a town hall kind of, you know, meeting where uh, the organization is trying to convey, you know, where are we in this quarter or uh, address an issue or celebrate uh, success, then being able to have those communications before and after are, um, that is key. You know, that is something that is part of the experience rather than it just being an announcement, which is just no more than just a, 
video email, right? Mm-hmm. And it needs to be more than a video email. Yeah, I think. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's got to be the key word is engagement. Um, mm-hmm. Look, they had their own summit about it, and um, I think I think they did really well trying to show how important it is, um, because you know this is the, one of the better ways to be able to reach out to a community and uh, communicate stuff uh, really effectively and quickly. And you know, I'm working in a project at the moment where they've got that gear because that's what they do. <laughs> that mm, is that right. is what they. That is what they deliver, but not every organization has that kit. Not every organization has that capability. Um, now, the the live events with Teams, Yammer, and Stream are giving that capability to to organizations and and um, to be able to engage the employees in this this other way, which is really cool. Yep. Um, oh look, I'll, I'll just we'll switch to to the live chat too because there's some interesting conversation going on there. Um, Yes, yeah, so you've got uh, yeah, Phil uh, looking for for docs for live events. Uh, it looks looks like a scary long read. Oh, look, Phil, it's it's not that scary. <laughs> it isn't. It's just a case of getting familiar with the different options. Um, I think that you know Teams is is a very quick and easy option for just throwing on that live event and um, and match or rather managing the content, pushing from prepared to live. Um, where it gets a little tricky is is more about using. Uh, external encoders like OBS or something else that you need to further learn, um, and it's it's taken me a little while to do that. Um, Dean's comment there, he, he'd like to see an app, um, yeah, for that because what is it? We, we need an app that causes the phone to fall in the toilet whenever yeah, yeah, yeah. a call is made from the restroom. That's not really on topic there, Dean. Come on now. <laughs> I, I glanced at that and thought that could be a good comment about he's asking for a stream <laughs> app. Oh, no, no, no. Dean is, Dean is in a mood today. No, no, no. Oh, he's, Dean. he's in a funny mood. <laughs> I, I mean, like a funny mood. Like he's, he's being yeah, funny. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, I look forward to, to talking with him in person. I, I don't know if he's at Ignite, but that would be a, a cool conversation. Uh, yeah, moving along to uh, yes. oh, our, our second message after 18 minutes. The second message after 18 minutes. <laughs> You can tell I spend a bit of time in the live events one to compensate That's for right. no, it's areas good. I haven't. Um, 365 group creation. Tell us about it, Dan. Well, this is – we've seen quite a few messages in the message center about Office 365 groups, changes to way their, uh, their features based upon where they're created, which is boo bad in my opinion, uh, changes based upon – um, uh, who can see what? Uh, there's we've had quite a few of these uh, announcements, and here's another one talking about uh, we're not going to be able to edit the email, the welcome email that is sent out uh, as to group members. We're not going to be able to modify that anymore, mm-hmm. and then we're not also, also we're not going to be able to change the settings or, or adjust the settings for whether. Uh, members get conversations and meeting invites into their mailboxes uh, beforehand or at creation time. We'll have to do that afterwards. Um, and I and I think uh, and the other part is uh, let people outside the organization email the group. That's another setting we're not going to be able to do uh, in, until after the group is created. Um, I uh, when I'm reading through this and read through uh, more information about it. Uh, I really don't like this one again, and and I seem like it seems like I don't like a lot of these uh, three sixty five group announcements, but I don't like this one uh, because uh, when we're creating the group, I want to be able to make the settings and then be done with it. Now we have to create the group, and then users have to, I guess, select whether they're wanting to receive email or not. Uh, I hope that's not the case. I hope that we're going to be able to. I haven't been able to. Obviously, this has not changed yet. Um, I hope that we're going to be able to select it to say on because, you know, remember back when uh, if you create a, a group uh, by creating a team in Microsoft Teams, then by default, uh, users are not getting communications that are sent to the mailbox to their own personal mailbox, right? Mm. They're trying to get you to have your conversations in Teams. Mm. Um, the... With this, it seems like it's it's trying to shoehorn that same thing into other look. You know, when you're creating groups in other locations, um, I think it's very valuable. In fact, in my own organization, being able to uh, 
get group emails in my own personal inbox and be able to turn that on and off, right? If there's a season where I want to get those and have it managed in my inbox, I can do that. And then if I want to turn it off, I can, but I need that to be turned on by default or people who are new to groups or new to the group are not going to get that communication uh, straight away. Right. I Uh, I think, I think that um, this relates directly to teams and their move to, hide the Office 365 group mailbox that is created for the team in Outlook. It has disappeared. Um, I'm lamenting that because I find it useful and I do direct customers through to to making use of it. They know the difference between having a conversation in email and where they're actually conversing in Teams. Um, This feels like it's related to that because um, with this setting still available, if you create um, a group, it, look, it makes sense to have it for your email experience. If your group is an Outlook group and that's how you want to converse as a group, um, <clears throat> yep. as as a person when you're creating that group to begin with, it, you're not you're not losing the setting, but you are losing that that presence of mind that as you're creating that group, there's a few key choices to make as you're creating it. Yeah. So yes, it streamlines the process for creating the group, um, but you have to remember to go in and make those changes later. Um, and it's a, it makes sense to have people subscribe to it um, by default so that they are getting that information. They are getting calendar invites. They are getting other things as well mm-hmm. um, as, as you uh, have subscribed them automatically. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, settings are there afterwards. All good. Okay. Yep. And the, look, the... Um, the additional information just showed you about creating groups. It, it hasn't um, yet changed or updated that information, so that's right. all right. Um, the OneDrive for Business Admin Center is now honored, or oh, the setting is now honored by the Outlook desktop. I found this interesting when I read it. I, I hadn't noticed this. You know, when you're, you're wanting to make a, a default um, so that when someone shares a attachment from the OneDrive, mm-hmm. uh, the default, if you don't change anything, is... Um, edit for my whole organization, which is right. um, optimal for um, collaboration. It means that someone in the org can then <coughs> forward it on to someone else who might need to see it or want to see it, and then they've got permission to right. to edit. But when you change it to view, for example, um, so you don't want people to, to go in and edit your document randomly um, and go, oops, did I do that? I didn't realize that. Um it looked like Outlook was not um, obeying that setting. It would still go to that default of edit for organization. Or look, you might have even changed the setting to be just send it to specific people as your default. And um, that wasn't sticking, but now it is. It is now going to be honored by Outlook Desktop. Hoorah. Well, <laughs> what is you know one of the things that I'm always talking about on the show, right, is consistency. So well, if, you, if, you consistently talk about that then. <laughs> good. So I, I want it to be consistent. I want the experience across all my devices to be uh, the same, but I also want it to be that I make a setting and all of my devices and all my experiences uh, respect that setting. So this is a fantastic thing. Mm, yeah, that is good. Short and sweet. <laughs> Short and sweet. You know, rather than having to use a, you know, a... Um, edit the registry on machines and all that it would be great and so this is a great change Mm -hmm. um streamlining settings in teams and skype for business admin center Um, Mm. yeah so you go ahead (laughs) so um yeah this is and uh before we even got on the show phil had sent us a message about um, about this message. He had two messages in his um, message center, different numbers, different IDs. This one is, um, this ID is, what is it? It's 145946. Yeah, and his was four uh, was five. Um, and so was uh, 945, I think. Uh, different language, but saying the same thing, which is interesting. And he thought maybe it was because he had t- actually set the setting and uh, to turn teams off in the tenant. Maybe that's why he was getting that second mm. message. Okay. Uh, but this one is basically saying, uh, when you go into your uh, settings in, in uh, Microsoft 365 Admin Center, 
there are you can see all of your apps and some of them uh, we noticed have uh, a switch that says turn this off for my whole tenant and some don't and so this is uh, teams being uh, uh, wanting you to use the service and so uh, you're not going to be able to toggle that switch anymore uh, you're not going to be able to turn off teams for your whole organization uh, so they're saying you can manage this um, by licenses. So when you go in and assign a license to someone uh, in the UI, you can, you know, you, maybe it's an E3. It shows all of the services and each one of them have a toggle. And so it's saying you can toggle Teams off for that user. Mm. Um, and so if you go to the additional information, it's showing uh, there is a PowerShell, although I'm not entirely sure if this is going to get us exactly what we want once they make this change. But uh, anyway, um, I, this is a backward step for administration if you're wanting to turn off Teams. Basically, what they're saying is instead of turning off Teams, they want you to for you, it to grow organically in your organization. Well, of course they do. Um, so it says Microsoft recommends that you turn on Teams for all users in the company. Of course they do for adoption. Um, and if you're doing a pilot, then just talk to those people in your pilot, but leave it on for everybody else so that maybe they can discover it organically and, and start using it in, in a way that you don't really want them to use it. But because you're not communicating with them, you're only communicating to the pilot team. And I'm sorry, I got derailed there. <laughs> but anyway... Um, I, yeah, when you're taking power, I'm an IT pro by trade. And when you take away power from an IT pro of, of trying to organize and, and manage your organization in an effective way based upon your organization, Microsoft talks all the time about your organization having a, a personality and, um, and, and, and having a, a way you do business. And, and anyway, it just, it seems backwards to me, um, this change and it, Unless you think of it from a marketing standpoint of saying they want people to just um, have teams on and so they can say they have teams users. But anyway, do you, off my soapbox, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. But, but would you would you subscribe to the, the turn it all on scenario? Like, well, because I know there's um, a lot of features and things that are coming out that are interdependent um, mm -hmm. with, with something like this. Uh, you know, making sure that it's turned on means that they can deliver other things that might leverage teams, such as live events. Yeah, so we'll get into this in uh, at Ignite, I believe, maybe. Oh, did I just set us up for a little promo? <laughs> I may, or maybe did I say more than I should? Or I don't know. Anyway, there may be uh, there may be a session debating something on this topic. And so I do have an opinion on this. Of course, I have an opinion on everything anyway, um, but I do have an opinion. But and with Teams, I I like having Teams on uh, by default, generally speaking, because they're wanting it to be that central hub for everything happening. Mm -hmm. However, there are situations where, you know, people start using it and they start creating groups from it and they don't understand what they're doing. And so you've got all these groups now being created um, that don't get email in their inbox, for instance, because if you create it from Teams, then voila, you don't get email in your inbox uh, from that are being sent to that group. Anyway, so I, I don't like it. I don't like the the heavy handedness of this. Um, I would much rather it still be there, uh, but I do like it being turned on by default. In this case, I do for Teams. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, and there's a similar kind of feeling in in the chat. Um, so yeah, Phil, of course, who, yeah. who um, you know had a discussion with us earlier about it. Um, so yeah, he's uh, he wants it to be consistent, but but uh, yeah, it's managing everything by license. We had a check, didn't we, just before the show uh, to see which services were like this. So you do have um, groups you can't turn off as a toggle. There was uh, what else was there? Well, there was a few things that you still had to or or could. Um, so it, it looks like each of those services are being pulled in line so that um, you can turn them on or off. Um, you, you'll have that ability removed. Um, you'll probably still have them um, available in preview. So you'll still have that toggle while, while something's in preview to turn it on or off your org. Um, Jeff Bovey says, uh, you know, uh, that's a, <laughs> not a great position to be in if you're a highly regulated company because 
you know, oh, let's just turn something on by default and, and not be able to yeah. turn it off for our org. Um, let's go. And then it's it becomes quite a challenge for the team to think, is this actually ready? Is it is it something that we can regulate? Can we keep control of yeah. things and stay compliant? Um, well, and that's something that, yeah, I agree with you. That That's a, one of the examples. Um, you know, we've had conversations before, um, I think, about the uh, versioning uh, issue, you know, in, in OneDrive and SharePoint and that forced and um, and, and uh, Sarah Hazy was talking about it in the chat about it. Um, so I, I think it, it is uh, something that when definitely when you're in regulated um, industries, this is huge and be forcing it down their throats. And now you're adding more uh, administration that's required for administrators and, uh, you know, uh, steps that are required for administration. I don't like mm. it. Mm. Yeah. But anyway. Well, I uh, would just on, just on time, but we'll just quick do a quick yeah. salute to this last, um, last message. Um, the TLS certificate is, uh, coming. It's going to be uh, changed within exchange. This is just a, a yet another warning. So we've had a few, few warnings about this. Uh, yeah, but you know, this is specific to saying there's a new certificate coming, and so you need to update your servers. Need to update, and they do that automatically. But they need to be able to access those endpoints at the bottom to yeah. be able, you know. So if you're uh, locking down your firewall um, and you don't allow your servers to communicate outside, or or you have specific endpoints that they can connect to, mm. you need to add these points uh, endpoints to those uh, that list of yours. So yeah. this is this is actually a really important one for Exchange folks to that they're doing this. If you're you have Exchange online and you're um, but you're in a hybrid, so you have Exchange servers on prem, you really need to pay attention to this. And this is a big one. This is not, um, you know, I'm not trying to you know make it bigger than it is, but it really is a big thing because if you don't allow that, then you're going to be in trouble. Um, you know, if you can't get that new certificate. Yeah, it's it's oh. like uh, it's just, it's kind of along the same lines of of forgetting the date of your certificate at Inspire and ignoring those yeah. emails that come in, right. and then something stops because the certificate's expired. Right. And yeah, so yeah, you're right. Thanks, Dan, for for pointing that out. Well, that that's um us. We're sort of three minutes over. Um, thanks for joining us. Thanks to the chat room um, for for joining yep. us too. Uh, Phil, Thank you, Jeff, Dan, Dean. Um, there was a few other people there. Who were there? Da, 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 da. Heidi. Um, yeah, so thanks again. Um, uh, tune us again uh, next week. We'll, we'll be uh, right here at the same time, same channel. Our channel. Hey. Um, hey, something about that, Dan. You've, you've got yes. a, a short link for us. Yes. So uh, just real quick, we're going to start using the domain message, message center dot show. Uh, and then we'll create a quick link of the episode number. So this is messagecenter.show slash 58, because that's the number here. And then we'll also tweet out, uh, we'll have a, a short link for the, uh, you know, I do a wrap-up post, uh, kind of doing an outline, and, and we'll have one for that as well. So we're going to start using that. Uh, so um, make sure, I, I guess it's go.messagecenter.show show slash 58 anyway just watch for us we'll be tweeting that out uh but a shortcut to get to the playlist is message center dot show that'll take you right to our playlist of all of the episodes yeah and you know we're still regarding 365 we're still um right. on regarding 365.com you'll see those stories there we just found a, a bit of a, a mouthful and a challenge to describe to people how do you find our show on the regarding 365 channel um, so this is definitely helpful and gives us a, a lot of uh, leeway to point to certain other resources as well as we talk about them. Yep. So thanks right. for doing that, man. Um, so, yeah, that, that's us. Um, and look at the other end of the week. Uh, tune in for a live stream where we talk to Ian McAtel and March Rogers. And we have Luis Fries doing some, some sketch noting. We'll be uh, asking some questions of them about it's gonna be Microsoft huge. Whiteboard. Really looking forward to that. That's right. <clears throat> so thanks, everyone. We'll catch you again next week. Bye for now. Bye-bye.